Perfect. So you guys, welcome to the Team Arise Monday Night Team Call. And I am one of the coaches of Team Arise alongside with Kinsley, who's on with us here. I'm Allison. And we have a bunch of other girls joining us this week just because it is obviously a special Holy night. Shit. We have an amazing speaker with us. So I wanted to welcome Jill's team. I wanted to welcome Courtney's team. And I know Kinsley has some of her Uplines girls on here as well. So thank you, everyone, for being on with us. We're so excited. I hope you guys have your notebooks ready and a pen because I obviously know we're going to be hearing a lot of amazing things and hopefully kind of dive into what clean week is and how we could run, you know, our own program just like that. Um, and we are seriously, you guys so lucky and truly honored to have Megan with us. So I'm actually going to pass it over to Brittany really quick because she's going to give Megan a, a little introduction and we'll just get going with everything. All right. Hi guys. I'm Brittany. Um, I'm one of Allison's coaches. I've, if you don't know me, um, and this past Super Saturday, I had the privilege of meeting the super trainer, Megan Davies. So she came to Charleston and did a little introduction and gave us an awesome speech. Um, she was the winner of the Beachbody show, The 20s, which was a reality show that was searching for the next Beachbody super trainer. Um, you may also know her as the creator of Clean Week. And Clean Week is a seven-day nutrition and workout program that helps others kickstart their journey with ha healthy habits and creating a lifestyle. So after hearing Megan speak at Super Saturday about different barriers or limits that we often place on ourselves personally or as coaches, I knew we needed to get her on a team call. So it is my privilege to introduce you to Megan Davies. Hi guys, thank you uh, so much for having me on your call um, at the Super Saturday. I was like, put me on your calls guys, put me on your calls. Um, Cause I like, this is my favorite part of this job is connecting with you guys. Um, I do usually start these things off by, is it echoey? It is, if anyone is not muted besides Megan, <laughs> mute yourself please. It might also, I was trying to use the headphones because also my house is echoey, so I don't know if that's causing the problem, so let me try to take them off. I think it might be better now. We'll try. Okay, I'll try. Um, so I usually start um, by telling you guys a little bit more about me, my background, um, where I come from, because um, not only does it help, like, you guys connect with me better when you know, you know, what my background is, but also it's a huge part of why we created Clean Week, why we decided on a program like Clean Week. Um, so we'll start there and we'll kind of move on into some of the other things that, that Clean Week has to offer for you guys, specifically in your businesses and how it can help your business grow. Um, Cause that's the most important part of Clean Week basically, um, is getting more people into your groups. So, um, so starting from the beginning, I mean, I was in the typical American family household. Um, you know, obviously when I was growing up, it's not like we had a computer or Google in the house. Um, so my parents were just trying to do the best they could in giving us healthy meals and things like that. Um, but they didn't know anything basically um and so now looking back i can say like oh my god that seems so ridiculous like what we used to do but at the time i mean it just seemed like that's what everybody did um and so basically the only reason i didn't have a weak problem as a kid is because i was the most active person in my family but besides me i don't come from a small family i come from people that are a hundred plus pounds overweight um you know gastric bypass like multiple people in my family have had gastric bypass um and some people have made a, a huge transformation either using that or using you know diet and exercise or combination of both but i don't come from small people and i don't come from um, people that haven't struggled with this our entire lives um, and so when i was very active when i was young it didn't occur to me even that my family even had a weight problem or was any different than anybody else but i do remember seeing my family go on this roller coaster all the time um they would you know most nights would consist of like pizza or something like that um you know i lived off of like hot pockets when i got home from school and soda and things like that and then every once in a while my family would be like oh man we really need to be healthier so what did healthier mean to us back then it meant 
uh, fat-free Hot Pockets instead of regular Hot Pockets and sugar-free Pop-Tarts and diet soda instead of regular soda. Like, you know, anything that had the word fat-free diet, you know, any of the garbage that's on the shelf, like that's what we went for because um, we really didn't know any better. And, and not only that, but eating a ton of that garbage then. Um, and eventually we would just kind of lose sight of that. Um, my parents would eat like nothing but salads, not even salads with anything actually in it, like romaine lettuce, a ton of dressing. Um, my dad would go into the gym for hours on end trying to lose weight and they would lose some weight, but then obviously you can't maintain that kind of lifestyle. And so then they would start gaining the weight back. Um, and my diet was just as in unhealthy, but like I said, I was just a very active kid. And as I got older, um, I happened to just kind of fall into doing figure and fitness competitions, um, kind of like the bikini competitions you see now. They didn't have bikini back then. So I started doing that when I was 14 years old. And luckily, I had a trainer to kind of start teaching me a little bit more about how to work out, how to strength train. A little bit about nutrition, but he didn't really have a background in nutrition, so I didn't really start learning about that then. Um, and so I just started doing all these things because I fell in love with it. I started competing. I loved being on stage, um, and and I just started working out that way. Um, my dad at the time had always loved bodybuilding. I remember having like Arnold Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding when we were younger, like in the house, um, and he had like muscle and fitness magazine in the house, but he just never did those things for himself. And so at one of my shows, I'm about 16 years old at the time. And I come out into the audience where my family's sitting and I see my dad sitting there and he's 47 years old at the time. He has a 42 inch waist. He's guessing he's hundred pounds overweight, but at some point he stopped stepping on the scale. Cause he's just like, I don't even want to see it anymore. Um, host of health issues. And I just remember sitting next to him and looking at him and I was like, you know, daddy, I feel so sorry for you. And he's like, you feel sorry for me. Like you're, you're my 16 year old daughter. What do you feel sorry for me for? And at the time it had nothing to do with his weight. I looked at him and I was just like, here I am on stage doing bodybuilding type competitions. Like he's always been interested in but he's providing everything I need to do this and he's not doing it for himself. Could see him digging himself into the, into the ground, just working long hours every single day, doing everything to provide everyone with everything except for provide for himself and take care of himself. And that's really as a 16 year old, even where I was coming from, like I was like, he's not living his best life. I can see this. Um, and so that's where I was coming from. And so at that moment he was like, you know what? That's, pretty sad that my daughter feels bad for me, that she's noticing that I'm not taking care of myself. Like that's to the point it's gotten. I need to do something about this. And so in front of everybody, he said, I'm going to get on that stage by the time I'm 50 and I'm going to do a show with my daughter. And my family is super supportive of each other, but I know some of the family, it's like, we've seen everybody go on this roller coaster for so long. It's like, okay, we'll see how long this one lasts kind of thing. Like we'll be, supportive as long as we can until you know life takes over again um but the difference this time was is he had me already doing this um so i didn't know much about nutrition we both needed to learn about nutrition together at this point because at one point i was getting ready for a national show um you would think you would look at me and think this girl's like the epitome of health but i had no idea what i was doing i was just asking various people like what are you doing what are you doing um in competitions and they would let me know and i would take little pieces of everything and put it together. And my little 16 year old self is just like, well, the more abs I can get to pop out, the better. And so you visually you would look at me and think I'm super fit. Um, but one day I was getting ready for a national show. I went to like just straighten out my ponytails on the ponytail, on the ponytail, on the treadmill with my friend. And I went to straighten out my ponytail and a huge just chunk of my hair came off in my hand. Um, and I just completely like freaked out. I had no idea that I could even be harming my body by dropping my body fat so low. I wasn't eating any healthy fats in my diets. It was pretty much protein and, and carbs. And I was, and I mean, healthy carbs, but like still protein carbs, chicken, brown rice, and vegetables. And I wasn't including any healthy fats in my diet. Um, and so eventually my hair starts falling out. 
So at the time, it was just as important for both of us at each end of the spectrum. Here I am looking like the epitome of health, needing to learn about nutrition. Here's my dad who has weight to lose. Um, and we both need the same thing at this point. So we learn about it together. Um, my dad is, you know, first he loses the weight, then he decides, okay, I need to look like a bodybuilder now. I need to put some muscle on. So it really did take three years for him to make this transformation because um, his goal was not to embarrass himself. He wanted to look at least like he belonged on that stage. So it was like, okay, now I need to start gaining muscle. Um, and so once my family saw like, okay, he's been doing this a year, a year and a half, like Megan's on board with him. They're working out in the garage together. They're learning about nutrition together. So then my mom starts being like, okay, like if you guys are really doing it this time, like I want in. So she starts doing it too. Her thing was like more dance related. Um, my brother joins in. Um, and so pretty soon we're all kind of making this transformation together. And we have this new support system at home together instead of, I mean, I have people coming into my gym all the time that they're like, I want my, my, daughter to do this, but I'm not going to do it. I want my spouse to do this, but I'm not going to do it. Um, and they have whatever excuse in the world that they're not going to do it with their spouse or with their kid. But I'm like, if your kid's going to do it, why aren't you doing it? If, if you're going to do it, why aren't your kids doing it? Why are you perpetuating the bad cycle that, that these bad habits that you had where you know it didn't work for you, but you don't want your kids to do it too? Um, it was super important for us to be on the same page together to actually make this transition as a family. Um, and so once we started making the transition, um, friends and family were just kind of like, hey, what are you guys doing? We see you losing weight. We see you being more active. Like, what is going on? Um, and so we started just training people on my dad's garage. We put a little bit of equipment in there and we would just train them like after, after school, after work, we do like a little nutrition seminars in our living room. Um, and eventually I did go off to college. I went to the university of central Florida. Um, but to me, it didn't, it didn't occur to me that that could be my like career, like that fitness could be my career. Like going into college, it was like, well, now I get a desk job. Like this is like how I, how I work this, this is life. Um, so I went to college, I got a degree in health service administration. I liked numbers. Um, I'm, I'm good with the accounting kind of stuff. And it's basically like the business and accounting like degree of the health field. So that's my degree. And I got done with school. I moved back home and I got a job in my field. And then I sat in a cubicle and looked at a computer and crunched numbers all day. Um, and I liked my job. I liked the people that I worked with. I got paid okay. Um, everything was good. I just wasn't that happy. I wasn't as fulfilled as when I was, you know, working out with people. Um, but we still were training people in my dad's garage. I like picked up right where I left off. My dad had always been helping people. And finally, um, and backtrack a little bit, my dad did get on the stage when he turned 50 years old, um, and I just remember watching his competition. I actually competed the night before at the same show. The women went the first night, the men went the second night. And I'm watching the competition, and you know, I've been doing it for several years now. I'm like, man, I, like, I think he's gonna do really well. So I go running backstage, and I'm like, you know, if he places, if he wins a trophy, can I go out and give him his trophy? And there's a woman there that's known me like basically my entire life at these shows, and she looks at me and she's like, honey, your dad's not just going to place, like your dad's going to win first place. And I was just like, what? Um, and so I got to get like, go out and give him his first place trophy, um, which was, it still makes me like choke up to this day. Like, it's just like, uh, it's been my favorite part, like out of all the transformations probably that I've been a part of now, like that was definitely my favorite one ever. Um, and so they just fired us up. And so even when I got home from college, it's like, we're still training people in the garage that would get so big that we bring people to the park a couple nights a week and train them in groups. Um, on Saturdays we would do a Tony Horton P90X like workout as a group in my dad's garage, just cause there were so many people, um, which is an interesting turn of events, even, even more so than me also becoming a trainer like another interesting turn of events that I'll get to in a second. Um, but so we have all this going on 
and my dad calls me up one day while I'm at work and he says, you know, we have all these people in the park now, you know, our neighbors have to be wondering what's going on with this business that we have in our garage. Um, so maybe we need to really start thinking about opening up a place. And my dad's always, we call him Mr. All or nothing. Like just as he dove right into, you know, becoming a bodybuilder, he's like, let's open up a gym. And I'm like, no, I'm in the middle of my work day. I'm not going to open up a magical gym. He's like, yeah, I already found a location. I'm going to go look at it this afternoon. I'm like, no, I can't do this. So I hang up the phone. I'm like, I'm not going. And, and then I sat there and thought, and I was just kind of like, you know, the least I can do is ask if I can leave today. I asked and she said, yes. And so I leave that day and we go to look at this location. And it was just like, I mean, I look back and I think, okay, I motivated my dad to make a change and kind of like take a dive into the unknown. And then my dad like right back, like turned it right back on me and said, okay, well, let's open up a gym together. Like now I'm motivating you to make a move. And so I walk into this location and I just remember that whoever was before us loved the color lavender because the floors were lavender and the walls were lavender and the light fixtures were lavender. And it just was horrible. But we walked in and at the same time, I knew like I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm doing the right thing. Like this is what I was meant to do. I wasn't meant to sit in that cubicle and I need to do this. And so it's funny because I tell people at the time I wasn't even only working that job and I wasn't only training people in the garage. I also was do being a nighttime manager for another small gym. So man, I was waking up at like four o'clock in the morning to work out myself, going to my first job, leaving that by like four or five o'clock, going to my next job, managing this gym until like eight, nine o'clock, going home, training people in my dad's garage and like exhausted. But that was my favorite part. You know, even just the management of this other small gym and then training people like I knew when I walked into this facility, like this is what I wanted to do. So, um, all of that work and I had saved up $3,000 and I was so like proud and excited of that $3,000. And on that day I wrote a check for $3,000 first last security. And I gave them my check. We painted it all weekend. We ripped up the flooring and by Monday we had a gym and then we went, crap, what did we do? Um, because we have all these people in the park. Are they actually going to convert into paying members? Now we have overhead. We have to charge for this. Are they, are they going to follow along with us on this journey? And the ultimate answer was yes, because they saw that we were just trying to do this out of like, we made the transformation. We wanted to help other people with love and care and actually give them the right resources to make a change in their life. Because there is not many people or companies out there that are trying to make this easy. Um, and I certainly had misconceptions about Beach body going into it, which again we'll talk about in a second, because I didn't think that they were a company that was trying to make this easy for for people, and I thought that you know exactly the misconceptions I have about most products and services out there was kind of what I thought beach body was, and so we had been running the gym. My mom's our office manager. My dad was still being a financial planner, but also working at the gym as a trainer. My brother was a trainer at this point. I was a trainer. We're all working this thing together from like crack of dawn to late at night. And, um, and then I get a call asking me if I want to be on a reality show. And, um, if there's something you need to know about me, it's that I am an introvert. And if you would have told me, you know, three years ago when I was applying for Beachbody that I would be doing calls like this, that I would be talking in front of super Saturdays, that I would be on stage at a summit in front of thousands of people, like I would have been like, that sounds like my nightmare. And that was exactly the reaction I had about the reality show. Like that sounds like my nightmare. I do not want to be on a reality show. And they were like, oh, you know, they need more trainers. You know, we're, we're at, like, I really want to put in, it was like a casting agency. They're like, I really want to put in some more actual trainers. Um, so, you know, would you please just send in the videos? And I was like, no. So they call me a second time and they're like, it's for this company called Beachbody. And they're all excited about it. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And I don't want to do it. Um, rewind to when I first opened up my gym, Tony Horton actually came to my gym um, at one point to film a different reality show. And I met him and I spent the day with him. And I was like, this guy has the coolest job ever. And then I didn't think about it again for five years. And so they said Beachbody. I'd done Tony Horton's workouts. I've met Tony Horton. I spent the day with Tony Horton. Still do not know what Beachbody is. How? I don't know. 
been in the fitness industry since I was 14 years old, still don't know what beach body is. So when you guys think like people tell me like, Oh, that's so crazy. And I'm like, yeah, don't assume everybody knows, you know, what the company is or what they stand for or what they're about, because I had no idea, um, being in the fitness industry for so long, I had no idea. Um, so they're like beach body. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. Don't want to do it. And so third time's a charm. They asked me again and I was like, worst case scenario. I'm like, you know, at this point I had auditioned for a bunch of other things, but they were like print ads. Like I would run, somebody would take a picture. Like that's all. Didn't have to talk. No cam, like video cameras involved. I was like, that's good for me. Like I can do that. But I had auditioned for probably a hundred things, maybe gotten five out of like three years that I was auditioning. So this is very much a hobby and a fun thing to do every once in a while. Um, and so finally I just sent in the videos because I was like, worst case scenario, I don't get a call back per usual, not going to worry about it. That was October, 2015. And I didn't hear anything back until almost February, 2016. And I had already written it off, not thought again about it. Like didn't get it. No big deal. Um, and then I get a call like you're moving ahead in the process. We're taking you out to LA. You're going to have a final casting. And I was like, for what? And they were like, beach body. I was like, no. <laughs> and, um, and so then that's when I finally had to sit down and say, well, let me figure out what I'm getting myself into. Googled Beachbody. Of course, Tony Horton's face is one of the first ones that pops up. And I'm like, oh, the guy with the really cool job. Like, yeah, I should really take this seriously. Um, and so with my misconceptions going into it, I was still like, you know, I need to take this seriously. It's a huge opportunity to reach a larger audience and, and, you know, help more people. So I'm still going to take this seriously and see what it's about and kind of went into it blind. Um, walking in the door, I saw the Shakeology bar in the house uh, of the, of the twenties of the reality show. And even that didn't know that Shakeology was connected to Beachbody. Um, and also had misconceptions about Shakeology. I remember one of my clients brought it to me at one point, said, can I have this? I remember sitting in her living room, looking at the ingredients, and I handed the bag back to her and literally said to her, I don't see anything bad in this, but there has to be something hidden. Like there's something in here, you know, I don't want you to have it, you know, and, and I recommended some sort of other product that, you know, now that I know what it is, is actually very similar. Um, but tasted horrible, 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 horrible. So I like, I remember these things. And so I walk in and see Shakeology and I'm like, oh man, not only do I not know if I can get behind, you know, beach body, I don't know if I can get behind Shakeology. And I definitely, one of my main things in my entire career is I don't push something that I don't believe in. I'm not going to be the fake person that pushes something that I don't believe in. So I was like, man, I don't know if I can, I can go through with this. But uh, so with the twenties, I'll let you guys watch the twenties. If you haven't watched it, it's short 20 minute episodes. It's like 10 or 11 episodes. It's, um, it's commercial free. So it's literally like a good little binge watch. Um, and going through that, we literally were in that house filming for like seven weeks, I would say. And, um, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have internet. We didn't have music, like zero connection with the outside world for seven weeks. And, um, and so the only thing we actually had, it's when BOD was first about to be released. So we had BOD in the house and that's all we had. And so we would work out. I've done almost all of the work or like all of the programs I've done at least a couple of the workouts. Um, and so we were doing like two workouts a day off of BOD, plus filming all the different challenges and stuff. Um, plus I was eating perfectly because they were keeping my receipts. And I was like, man, if Carl Deichler is looking at this receipt, wondering why I bought those Oreos or whatever it is, like, I'm not, I'm not going to be that person. So I was like eating perfectly on those seven weeks. Um, he wasn't looking at the receipts. It was, it was for accounting purposes. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to be, you know, docked for that. So, um, so it was a really positive experience, but it really introduced me into all things beach body. Like, oh my God, they have modifiers. They have a nutrition program that goes with every single uh, program. They have um, a workout calendar that shows you what workouts to do when, which is really important in like progressing somebody through a certain amount of time um, is to know what you need to do and when and when you should go up and weights and things like that like it completely opened my eyes into truly what beach body really was i thought it was like oh man insanity like 
I saw the infomercial. It looks like they're just trying to make people throw up. Like, how can this be good for people? Like, I had no idea that Shanti is like the most motivational person ever, constantly talking about taking it at your own pace, breaking when you need to, follow the modifier when you need to. It was just really eye-opening. And then we had to learn about Shakeology for one of the challenges, like the ins and outs. They basically just handed us a bunch of materials about Shakeology and they were like, learn this, it's for a challenge. So we literally, literally like memorized what was in Shakeology. Um, and, and so you guys can watch all the challenges and things like that. Um, the only other thing I'll say about the actual 20s is that they narrowed it down to three finalists at the end. Um, that's not really a, a, you know, I'm not really ruining anything for you guys because obviously you know one. Um, but they narrowed it down to three finalists. We're all sitting in a room in silence because they don't want us to like interact with each other until we're on, on film. They're setting up a set downstairs where they're going to announce the winner. So we're like just sitting in this room, like sweating. And finally somebody from Beachbody that we've never seen before walks in and is like, Hi, so guys, I just want to let you know that we're not going to announce a winner today. And guys, we've been in this house for seven weeks. Like, we are going stir crazy. We're like, what do you mean? Like, and they're like, we're actually going to film three different endings and we're going to, um, and we're going to, like, you know, each of you is going to have the ending where you win. And then six months from now, when you, um, when you, when this all airs and things like that, and the final episode airs, that's when we're going to tell you whose episode is going to air. So it was very much like you guys voted and everything like that. It was very much a voting process and a not actually announcing a winner or anything like that. So when you see me just cover my face, it's because I didn't know what else to do because I knew I didn't actually win. And so I waited six months to be like announced a winner. Um, and I see I have like less than 10 minutes left, so I'm going to boom. Um, so, so I waited. Um, once they announced me as the winner, things had to move very quickly. Um, you know, we needed to get a program out there right away. We had been talking about doing a different kind of program, which I won't talk about just in case, you know, they want to use that in the future. Um, but eventually Carl called me up and he was just like, what kind of people do you train? Like, who's the person that comes into your gym? And I was like, man, the person that comes into my gym, it's not an athlete. It's the average person that wants to lose a little bit of fat, gain a little bit of muscle, feel better about themselves. Like that's the person that I train. And he's like, that's what I thought. And he goes, and honestly, I've had this idea for a program that, you know, I think could be really beneficial. The way that you got introduced to Beachbody, I think other people really need that. Um, and we need a new face to do that in order for it to kind of be a real introduction and not funneling it into one specific program. So that's when we started coming up with the idea of Clean Week. And then in one month, man, we created that program. We practiced it. We put the like the cast in there and, and everything. And we filmed it all in one month. I was out in LA for one month. I live in South Florida. Um, and we put that thing together, like boom, boom, boom. And they did an amazing job um, kind of, you know, with the nutrition and everything like that. Like, yeah, I have my hand on all of that but guys Beachbody has such incredible nutrition teams that that put their like professional like expertise on it so I sit down with the professionals and I say this is what I believe in this is what I do I want a simple meal plan because I hate being in the kitchen I don't want to sit there cleaning forever so man that's what I want for my program and then they kind of said okay how about these ideas and how about we put it together like this I'm like this sounds amazing um, and so that's really what we created introductory into beach body. That's why I'm talking about all the programs all throughout claim week. I'm mentioning all the different programs um, and a little bit about each one. So they know what's going on and, and kind of know that there's a next step. It's not like I do this for a week and I'm done. It's not like, you know, and then it's like, we're talking about what are you going to do next in the middle of claim week? We're already talking about, Hey, get with your coach and start deciding what program you're going to go into next. Um, and Clean Week is really built also to eliminate barriers, which is a lot what we talked about in Super Saturday. So I call them the fit barriers, financial barrier, insecurity barrier, time barrier. And it just happens to be FIT, but really that's what prevents anybody from starting anything. They're always going to have an excuse that I don't know what like other thing it would fit into besides financial insecurity and time, right? So financial, I mean, it's $30 for the actual Shakeology sampler, $29.95. Um, but like, 
like I would per say that you should go for that route first, but they can also go the route of actually being free. You get those people that are just like, Hey, I've spent hundreds, thousands of dollars on all these different fitness things. I'm not trying to spend any more money on another thing. Well, okay. I want you to try this for free with me. And then I want you to go into the two week trial of beach body on demand because you don't have to put in your credit card to get clean week. It can be very separate. They can do clean week and then have their two week free trial. Um, so all of those things are really important to kind of smash that financial barrier opens the door for you guys for people to really realize all the things that beach body has to offer. Obviously I would like them to have the Shakeology sampler as well. And you should too, because that opens the door to introducing them into that as well and actually trying it and feeling how great they feel after using Shakeology. And then the meal plan, super simple. The workouts are, are uh, simple, but they're not like super easy either. Like I have people that have been doing beach body for a long time. They're like, dang, my legs were sore. It's simple in the fact that all the moves are accessible, but it's still a significant workout. We didn't want people to feel like they were doing the baby program. Um, we came up with a concept of doing an intensifier instead of a modifier because I did a, a class like trying out clean week with a bunch of beach body employees. Um, and I had the modification that was going to make it that beginner program that they wanted. Nobody did the modification, all different levels in there. Nobody did it, which I know like in my own classes at the gym, I know that that's how it goes because nobody wants to feel like they're doing less than, and they have this mental block up about doing the, the modifier. Um, and so we switched it the next day I came in, here's the base move and here's the intensifier. And then all of a sudden, everybody felt really good about being at the base move. If they wanted to intensify, they could. If they started with the base move and intensified, they even felt really good about it. They were super excited about it. Man, I did that workout. Also, I tried some of the intensifier moves, and that's amazing. And so instead of being like, I did that program, but I only did the modifier that you hear so much, they're super excited by the time that they end clean week because they felt so good about being able to take it up a notch. Um, so that wasn't super important with clean week. Um, and so I really think that it's for a lot of people. It's for beginners. It's for you coaches that have been doing something like 80 day obsession or lift four. When you're done with those programs, sometimes it's a little mentally daunting to jump right into another round. Clean week is a good kind of like deload week, like to get your mind straight again. Um, and, and I think too, like some people are not ready even to work out yet. Like if you have somebody who's significantly overweight and talking like 200 pounds overweight more, they haven't been working out. They haven't even been active. Like what if they started with 2B mindset and then you said, Hey, I have some free workouts for you to try. Oh, you know what? A new program is coming out and they have a little more obsessed available, which is going to kind of be the teaser easier version of of 80 day obsession that's going to come out after that and you kind of guide them along on this journey step by step instead of overwhelming somebody that hasn't been moving in such a long time doesn't even matter if they're they're significantly overweight or not like getting moving after, after you haven't been is a lot um so kind of taking them step by step a little bit with clean week is going to be huge for them. And it's going to make them feel so much more connected to you as a coach, as this person that really cared and tried to get them off on the right foot. And, and they're going to feel super like ecstatic, like I said, about being able to complete something and, and feel good about it by the end of the week. Like it's a small, just win after the end of the week. I did those simple meal plans. I did get moving for 30 minutes. I can fit this into my life is how they should be feeling at the end of clean week. Um, so I know I have two and a half minutes left. So um, do you guys have, you know, questions for me? Um, and also I'm always available on Facebook, on Instagram. It's Megan Davies Fitness, M-E-G-A-N-D-A-V-I-E-S um, Fitness on both. And you guys can always message me there too and ask me any questions. And I'm happy to be in groups. I can only juggle so much, but if I can like, you know, be in a couple different groups, like I'm happy to do that with you guys too. Um, so if you guys have any questions on me, we have less than a minute. <laughs> 
Yeah, we, we, I don't know if you've been probably not following along with the chat, but we're all just like, your story is incredible. Like having us tear up over here, it's crazy. Um, but, <laughs> and we just like seriously appreciate it. I know Clean Week has been so helpful for so many people that I've worked with and I know everyone else on this, on this call too. So we appreciate like everything you've done and can't wait to see what else is to come? <laughs> Thank you. I hope so too. Everybody asked me that and I'm like, I'm just over here crossing my fingers. So Beachbody <laughs> says something's coming. We'll do something soon. But hey, all that stuff takes time. Clean Week's only been out a year. So yes. <laughs> patiently and patiently waiting. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm sure we'll get cut off soon. So we really appreciate everything, Megan. Yeah, thank, thank you guys you. so much for being on here. And, and thank you guys for having me and setting this up. I really appreciate it. We appreciate you. you. <laughs> All right. Bye, bye guys. Everyone. Thank you.